now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. For 23 years, folks, he's been walking around with a robe, no shoes. He's been in 20 countries, 47 states. Uh, you may recall we had a major um, worldwide news um, 2000 when What's Your Name, Carl's James Joseph, his real name, uh, appeared on the Sam LaSant Show, and that was 2000. Uh, and that time, if you recall, uh, ABC 2020 did a special on him. Uh, he was on Good Morning America, New York Times, Time Magazine, Washington Post, Philadelphia Inquirer, countless television stations and countless newspapers and radio stations. What's Your Name has been around. Uh, and he is back in the northeastern Pennsylvania. He's been here for a while. Uh, and what we asked was, what has he been doing since he left here in uh, 2001, I think it was. First of all, let me welcome you again on the show. Thanks, Sam. It's nice to see you. Likewise. likewise. <clears throat> you know, uh, we've had so many shows with you, and we've talked to so, so many things. Um, because we're playing the show um, in different areas that maybe people may not know of you, um, know of you, but probably not understand fully what you do. Um, some questions that came in when we asked uh, for some questions, some general questions, and then I'd like to get some specifics. How did you start this life of evangelization? Well, ever since I was 12 years old, I was extremely drawn to somebody that would live a life totally dedicated to God, that would um, let go of the use of money, let go of, of having property, of having any possessions at all. There have been men throughout history, and of course, Jesus himself and the apostles. So I was drawn to that, but it was only 23 years ago that I actually did that. And once I did, I found God took care of me, and it touched so many people's lives. It confirms that it's been his will. Then we get to the robe, okay? Um, do you wear anything other than your robe? Um, sometimes I might have to just to like wash this robe or something like that or, or airline regulations if I have a special ticket. But no, I've worn, I've worn nothing but the clothes on my back and the most simplest clothing possible and the most practical clothing. This is not a dress up. I don't think that I'm Jesus and I'm not trying to portray Jesus. But if you wear the simplest, most natural clothing possible and most practical if you're living outdoors, it's a robe. Which, here again, uh, you know, people have these questions. We're, you know, we're in a different century. Uh, how do you manage to keep a healthy hygiene? It's difficult. Um, sometimes I have to even, like, win an ocean or a stream um, or just use up, lock myself in a public restroom or something like that. Uh, thanks be to God, people are nice enough at the YMCA to let me take showers here. And I get invited to, to, to homes and um, rectories, monasteries, and I'll wash when I can. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I've known you for many, many years, and I've mm -hmm. always seen you to be, you have a good hygiene. So um, in which ways, and these are questions that came in, folks, in which way does God help you stay strong within your journey? You know, to do something like this that nobody well-known in history has done, something that is <clears throat> so intimidating, something that's going to remind people of Jesus himself, um, and you're going to have so many people that are before you and against you, it, it has to be from the grace of God. But I keep very connected with prayer. Uh, I try to keep in constant prayer. I keep very connected with church, especially with communion in church. And the prayers of, of all of you, you know, when we pray for each other, it has a powerful effect for keeping us strong. And I'm going to get on prayer in, in a second, but I just want to answer this other question this person emailed me. How do you walk through so many terrains and weather without any shoes? 22 years ago, my shoes wore out, and I thought, if Jesus had Peter walk on water, why couldn't he have me walk without shoes anywhere? And ever since then, he's given me a grace. So whether it's been snow, whether it's been desert sand, whether it's been glass, I just, like the, the scriptures say, angels will bear you up, lest you tread your foot against a stone. Now, you, you do realize that when you're people who do not know you see you for the first time are sort of like... What, what's this guy? Is he a joke? Is he, you know, is he, you know, uh, is it a costume or what's he, what is he trying to do? Okay. And I'm sure people that you've come across ask you those questions. The most common question, I guess, is, I mean, who, who are you? What are you trying to do? You know, you, you, you look like Jesus. Are you trying to be Jesus? Are you Jesus? You know, and, and what, what is the reaction, you know, or what, what do you tell them? 
Uh, I, I make it very clear that I just believe in Jesus. I just try to follow his example, his way of life. I live that in a very literal way as far as simplicity and poverty. And my goal is simply to try to help people to come to Jesus, to, to, to spiritually grow. You talked about prayer. And you often hear people, it always amazes me because the people who sometimes do not practice their faith when, when trouble times come or they hit a bump in the road, the first thing they're saying, pray for me, pray for, you know, etc. okay? Um, and we're hoping that people understand that it's not only when your good times are good or bad times, but also good times. Do you believe in prayer and why? Now, Jesus himself prayed, and his prayers were, of course, all-powerful. Well, when our prayers are connected with his, they as well have that same power. Now, we can be presumptuous that just because we ask for something and we think something should be, it's going to happen exactly that way. That's why we pray, thy will be done. But he does have our best intentions, and he did command us to pray. It's a, it's a relationship. It's a conversation where we get to know him. And he loves us as a father, so he does want us to turn to him, and he will help us. How do you stay current with the current uh, things that are happening in the country, like, you know, with uh, um, the evil that's going on, the, the things that are happening? In the, how do you get your, all this information from you don't have a television. You don't have a, a radio. I mean, how do you find this information? Basically by um, word of mouth. So people will talk enough about it, and I can hear it secondhand. But I basically find out what I need to know, and it generally tends to be bad news. Yeah. So I focus on the good news, of course. Talking about bad news, um, with all the evil that's in the world today, does prayer really matter? God only permits evil for a greater good. And the, one of the main reasons he permits this to happen is so we see the consequences of choosing the wrong and so that we will turn to him because when we can't get help any other way, he is the one that can and will help us. A statistic came by uh, that about Catholics, you know, that there's a lot of Catholics. But unfortunately... There are 25 to 30 percent of the Catholics, at least these are the numbers I received, I'm, I'm, they're bad numbers, but are practicing Catholics. So therefore we have people who say they're Catholic, but they don't practice going to church or... Um, what, what do you think, and, and you know, the interesting thing, let me just add a, something that, which I found extremely powerful. Uh, uh, Father Jack Lambert, who was my pastor at St. John Bosco Church, um, was a rite of... Um, a person coming into the Catholic faith and, and all of the things that you know they go through, which is beautiful ceremonies. And he said, here we have this great thing, Mass. Okay, here we have this church and what these people, uh, what we have to offer. And, and, and only if we could get these people that are, are Catholic to come back to church, you know. Uh, I thought that was a very powerful statement for Father Lambert to say. And, I, and I, it just like hit me with a ton of bricks. Here we are, so we're so fortunate, as Catholics at least, okay, to be able to go to Mass. Um, what would be your reaction to those people that are not going to church, that are Catholic? I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying they're not going to church. Uh, just to be uh, very welcoming. To, you, you've got to uh, admit it's not something that's going to hurt you. And in fact, it really is the greatest source of blessings. But there's a, there's a mental hang-up people have. So I try to get people wherever they're at just to invite them, not to allow excuses or uh, sometimes they're, they're just afraid. Or just um, put it in the background. And a reminder, a, a friendly, a loving reminder. And sometimes people are just going to have to be where they're at and just take it a little step, like a little extra prayer, asking God for help. Folks, I'm talking to uh, what's your name as he goes by. His real name is Carl James Joseph. Uh, Joseph. Uh, we come back, we'll have more questions for him. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam Hassan Show, folks. Remember, 24-7... You can watch any of my shows 24-7 on ssptv.com. Uh, my email, sam at ssptv.com. Today, my guest is uh, a person known as What's Your Name. For 23 years, he's been traveling uh, with no shoes, just a robe, and he has been in 20 countries in 47 states. Now, when you travel, the people say, how do you, you know, he doesn't have any money, you know, you know um, and yet, you know, you were, you, you were uh, in Jerusalem for four or five years, was it? Four years. Four yeah. years. You were in India for you know, a while. Uh, where does he get the money? I mean, how does he travel if he doesn't, you know, in all these countries and all these states? 
Where do you get all this, the money and the pay for tickets? And well, I don't use money myself. In fact, I don't even touch money. But um, God, if he wants you someplace, he can open up doors. And one of the doors he opened up is for an, an employee of an airlines to be able to <laughs> offer. And the offer was, well, where would be a good place to go to for Holy Week? Can we go as a group? And I said, the Holy Land. So we ended up going there, ended up staying there. And um, in India, I was invited by a particular priest and got to meet with the bishops. And I was right there where St. Thomas, uh, his tomb was. But God can open up any doors. And usually I walk. And then I also will get invited. So when you were in Jerusalem, we talked about that on the last show, show, and you were in India. What, what, what did you do the same thing in Jerusalem that, has you, that you're doing here in, in the United States? I do. I spend a considerable amount of time in prayer, and I get to interact, for example, in Jerusalem, with the whole world. So it's interesting for people to uh, live a life that reminds people of Jesus in the place where Jesus died and rose, in the land of the Bible. It's going to attract all kinds of attention, all kinds of media attention, too, like even National Geographic and BBC and that type of thing. And so evangelizing, sharing the gospel, interacting with people spiritually, I do that wherever I go. Now, when you were in India, what was, the, what was the reason or the calling, why India? Of all the groups of people that were closest or most uh, interested in what I do in Jerusalem, in the Holy Land, it, were, it was Indians, Indians that lived there. Now, there's a good uh, uh, question why, but they simply were. And, um, and I find, I guess a big part of it is because they're an extremely spiritual people and very, very open-minded. And so when I uh, go there, I find even the, uh, the bishops and priests to be very respectful because living this way of life is something very normal with them. It's been going on for centuries mm -hmm. for, for some, some men. And so it's very acceptable. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, thanks be to God, the opportunity is there. Now, you pray every day uh, and you attend Mass every day. Mm -hmm. um, um, were you able to do that in Jerusalem? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right in the tomb where Jesus himself rose from the mm -hmm. dead every morning. You went to Rome? Yes. Okay, what was the reason you went to Rome? I went to Rome on the feast day of uh, the anniversary of St. Francis signing his rule. He's been a big uh, role model, if you will. And um, with a similar idea for um, advice, f advice from the Vatican about the possibility of forming a, a congregation, and they gave advice uh, that was very practical. Just allow things to happen naturally and with the blessing of the bishop. Take things a step at a time, if it's meant to be. And, um, yeah, I spent about a month there. What were some of the things um, that you witnessed in Rome? What were some of the positive things and negative things? Well, Rome is the eternal city, so I was able to be there when they had the Synod of African Bishops. So every, basically every bishop of Africa was there, and we, uh, for a whole month, the same month that I was there, it, kind of, it coincided, and so praying with them, interacting with them, uh, being at a mass that was, simul uh, that was telecast simultaneously with different countries in the world, and there's a special strong spirit with the African. But, um, you know, a problem that has been a, a great source of criticism is that there can be a certain stuffiness. There can be a certain, um, you know, pride and, and, and lack of, of human warmth. And then here comes somebody like Pope Francis. Mm -hmm. A dream come true of a pope that's just so down to earth and, and humble and loving. And, um, and that's something that I try to embrace as well and share. It's interesting. When my wife and I had the good fortune of being there in Rome, um, you know, we went to, you know, the various basilicas and, and churches, and they're fabulous, I mean, as far as... But you've, I found a lot of people in Rome, Catholics, that don't practice their religion, no. which is very shocking. But then don't forget Rome's history as well. <coughs> I mean, even before Christianity, mm -hmm. it was the, a center known for it, its worldliness. So that, that spirit has not gone away. And it's so easy to take this gift that we have of our faith and take it for granted. You've been in, you came back to the Greater Hazleton area. You were here, as you know, in 2000, and it was a lot of activity. Um, you had national attention. People came in. International. Uh, in, and international, BBC, and they were all here. 
I'll never forget, it was like a zoo that day, you know, it was the... It However, was, how, was many days, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so the thing is, um, do you think that, you know, we all, you know, through my show here, you know, different areas, but we don't, we're not national. Do you think it would be advantageous for 2020 or Dateline or uh, a, a national television station to interview you again? And if they did, what would be the message that you would tell them? I find that these journalists, these people in the media want to do a positive story. And so if it's interesting, different, it touches a certain vein. People are, for example, this is a huge story in, in England. And um, maybe because um, there's a, a disenchantment with church, but there's a hunger for spirituality. And we know that we need help. And deep down, we know that it comes from God. So. It, this can be just a, a, an opportunity to think about these things, to focus on these things. When you met me the first time, mm -hmm. you sat in my office and we talked and, and, and you said something to me, okay, and you know where I'm going with this. You said, how's your ego, <laughs> okay? Uh, and then, you know, I explained it to you what, what I thought my ego was, uh, but then people asked me, how's your ego, okay? Because what you're doing is you wanna, you, you wanna get national recognition um, for, if, it, if God wants it. Okay. Well, if, they, if you do, okay, so is it, is it that your ego wants you to get this national recognition, um, you know, or what, what is it that you're trying to deliver? Okay, you know, you know where I'm going to be coming here? I do, and, um, you know, I just believe that this is an opp <clears throat> opportunity that God's given me, but it's all about Jesus, and I've got to be extremely careful. All of us need to, because that is what's holding us back. Why aren't we growing more? Why aren't we the better people that we are? You know, that ego is very subtle, too. So, and I don't want to be um, fooling myself into thinking that I'm, I'm more humble than I really am. Only God truly knows. But I can tell you that my intention is simply to glorify God and to help others glorify with him, because that is what, in the end, ultimately matters. No matter what a person does sometimes in their life, you know, if, if people like you, they'll like you. If people don't like you, they won't like you. Um, you have envy in this world. You have jealousy in this world. Then you have ego. Um, I took criticism when I had you on, saying that I had you on to boost my ratings, okay? Um, and that we're gonna sell a lot of advertising, okay? And that Sammy's doing it for his own purposes which was the furthest from the truth. But however, you know, we still have advertisers on and we did it. I, when I met you and I f thought that you had something to really offer, particularly from coming from Father Gerard Angelo, who has since passed, when he told me that you were a very honest person and you really meant good things. When Bishop Timlin sat, okay, not necessarily on that couch, but said, had endor endorsed you to the point that how do you find fault with a person who, who walks around with a Bible and is trying to bring people back to God. Folks, I'm talking and what's your name? We're gonna come back and uh, expound on that question or that comment as to what really is the purpose here. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam LaSant Show. Folks, 24-7 SSPTV.com. My email, Sam at SSPTV.com. My guest, uh, known as What's Your Name, traveled, uh, has been traveling for 23 years with just a robe and no shoes, uh, 20 countries, 47 states, uh, and also um, just recently coming back from Jerusalem. Uh, I'm talking to What's Your Name. So we talked about, you know, um, getting and get, getting the message across. What, what message do you bring daily to people who bump into you or, or have seen you on TV or in the newspaper? What, what, what do you tell these people? Well, especially <coughs> love. Everything is about love the love of God and love of others. And basically where we get off track is in this distorted love instead of being on track. And, um, and giving people hope because it's easy to become discouraged, uh, depressed about um, the situations in our lives. And um, to give people that hope that God really can and will change things around if you turn to him. And, um, and a lot of counseling, a lot of uh, praying with people. Uh, you come in regularly here uh, to see to talk with me and you know uh, you know use um, the facilities etc. Um, uh, people ask me you know like when it's it's snowing outside it's raining outside <clears throat> they think of you what's your name where is he is, is he in the streets is he you know what, what where do you where do you spend most of your time? 
I've been spending a lot of time in the Adoration Chapel lately, but um, I also will spend a considerable amount of time on the streets, even praying on the streets. We've been praying the rosary each night. Um, the Latino population, different parts of the city. And as I walk, I just, oh, so many opportunities open up. So I might be at somebody's house. Yesterday I was invited to participate in a, a, a baptism party for a, for a little girl. And um, I can invite, be invited to, to meet the elderly or to the sick and all kinds of opportunities. What's the, what's, the most, what's the most common question that you get when people see you for the first time? I know there's different reactions. Kids react a different way. Elder people, you know, write a different way. You know, people who say he's a nut, he's, he's, a, he's a nutcase. Um, what is the common question people ask you? Uh, where's your shoes? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's probably yeah. one of the biggest, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. And I just try to explain <clears throat> that with, uh, with faith, God has given me a gift. Mm -hmm. And that is how Jesus sent out his disciples. Mm -hmm. And they ask, uh, uh, like, well, who I am, or, or why I, I do what I do. And, um, and I love it when they, uh, they ask for help. Sometimes What kind of help? And I mean the, the kind of like spiritual help. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, uh, what they can do because they're, they're unhappy and they're in a situation that they know only God can help them with. You've told me some interesting stories um, about people that, you know, had some concerns and that you physically took them to church, okay, and made sure that they went to confession and, 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 the, commun and the Holy Communion. Why is it so important f for us Catholics to go to church and receive Holy Communion. Because Jesus meant what he said when he took the bread and the wine and said, take and eat, take and drink, this is my body and this is my blood. And earlier in history he had said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I live within you. But if you don't, you no longer have life within you. God has chosen in his own mysterious way to share himself in this mystery of his body and blood. And if you reject that invitation to be united with him in such an intimate way, there are serious consequences to that. You're just missing out on so much. So I just recommend praying about it. Try it. I mean, you're going to notice a difference. You go to confession, you go to communion. Everybody I've ever brought to that, they have a dramatic change in their life. Folks, I'm talking what's your name. Remember, if you have any questions, uh, this is part one of the show. Uh, I advise you to uh, email me, sam at ssptv.com. Um, what is the sharpest criticism you've, you've received? Yeah. I, it basically comes down to, like, who do you think you are? Yeah. You know, you can't be doing that. And, uh, and i got to admit, if, uh, if, if my heart isn't in the right place, then this would be the, the worst thing to do. And I know that's why people have, uh, have not done it or have uh, stopped doing it after a, a very short time. But, you know, I just encourage people to be open, that even though it is very different, God works in mysterious ways. I mean, in, in reality, it's just living as simple as possible. How long do you stay in a certain area before you move on? Um, it varies. Um, I was actually ready to leave here the very uh, uh, first night that I got here. If I wouldn't have been invited, I would have continued on because nobody responded when I first came into the area. And uh, in so many areas, I've just continued on. But when there's a, a great response, I'll stay generally for a little while. If it's like the Holy Land, it's been years. Mm -hmm. But here there's a special relationship that's had me come back. And this time, more than ever, people are appreciative. Mm -hmm. They, they, they thank me all the time. I had three different policemen on three different occasions thank me and say that it's a good thing that I'm here. Folks, if you want to uh, ask what's your name, any questions, uh, email me at sam at ssptv.com. It's part two will be coming up shortly. Uh, and he has a lot more to say. Uh, but I, again, I welcome your questions. Thanks for coming on the show again. Yeah, you're welcome. We'll see you next time.